NVIDIA's 4070 Super just released, AMD's cutting prices, wild new RAM that makes for faster CPUs, Ryzen 9000 release date, and RX 8000 is right around the corner. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 4070 Super is officially here. It's been released, and with that, we have reviews. But before I get to those, I will say that I'll have affiliate links down in the description below for the 4070 Super. So if you're interested in picking one up, they don't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Either way, as you can see, we have the 4070 Super, which starts out at $599, and just like I said before it even came out, the 4070 Super gets more added cores than any other Super GPU. So because of that, we should obviously expect a pretty decent performance jump, and we do in fact get it. As you can see right here, with this average of nine games with rasterization, the 4070 Super gets a fairly decent boost over the regular 4070. We're looking at around 17%. This boost actually puts it even higher than the 7800 XT, but as you can see right here, the 7900 XT still pretty significantly beats it, at least at rasterization. Though, obviously, the 7900 XT is more expensive than the 4070 Super, and the 7800 XT is cheaper, so it doesn't completely turn things on their head as far as price to performance or anything like that. But I will say, when we go down here with ray tracing, things actually flip. The 4070 Super ends up beating even the 7900 XT, showing, of course, yet again that AMD's cards aren't nearly as good as Nvidia's when it comes to ray tracing performance. With that said, at 4K, pretty much none of these cards are really hitting even acceptable performance levels, so obviously you're gonna have to turn on either DLSS or FSR. Moving over to 1440p, we see a similar story, and even over to 1080p, it's similar as well, though obviously the performance starts getting much closer because it becomes more of a CPU bottleneck than an actual GPU problem. Either way, the performance of the 4070 Super is pretty much exactly what we expected. There's really not much of a surprise here. It's obviously based on the same architecture. It just has more cores, a little bit more L2 cache, things like that, but nothing where we're going to see some giant boost. But with that said, while these Super cards, you know, really aren't a massive boost or anything like that, it was enough to force AMD to lower pricing on theirs, specifically the 7900 XT and 7900 GRE. You can actually see right here that the pricing has already gone down. AMD announced it, then it pretty much happened right then. You can see that these cards are significantly cheaper from what they were. Now, the new MSRP is technically $749.99 for the 7900 XT, but as you can see here, the price goes much cheaper lower going as low as $709.99. So we're getting really close to that $700 price point. I do know that not too long ago, Micro Center actually had it, I think it was like $699, but for that, you actually had to go in store to get it. So it was really a promotional deal just so they could get traffic in their stores. This obviously is a very real price drop. Not only that, but you can also see that you get Avatar Frontiers of Pandora with these GPUs. So that's even more savings right there. And just like with the 4070 Super, I will have these down in the description below. Once again, don't cost you anything more, but it helps the channel out. And of course, with that said, I also mentioned, I didn't just mention the 7900 XT, but also the China-only 7900 GRE. That GPU actually dropped down to $549. So clearly AMD is trying to combat Nvidia's new super cards, but not by releasing faster GPUs themselves or anything like that. They're just lowering the price of those higher end GPUs that are really gonna feel the hurt of these new price to performance that are set by the super cards. Specifically, I'd say that the 7900 XT was almost definitely lowered to better challenge the 4070 Ti Super, but obviously it also better helps them for the regular 4070 Super release. Now, 
One thing to note though is that this doesn't sound like it's a permanent change or anything like that. You can see that it says AMD isn't cutting MSRP for the 7900 XT, but rather implementing a quote, special promotional pricing program for select e-tailers and retailers this quarter. So yeah, if you do want to pick one of these up, I wouldn't wait too long because you could still find that they end up being more expensive yet again. And next up, I have a really interesting news story about some new DDR5 RAM sticks by Patriot. Now, before I get into it, I do have to quickly explain how things work when it comes to memory. For starters, JEDEC, they are basically this organization that sets the standard for what you can expect with DDR5. They more or less make rules for what constitutes DDR5, how to make it, certain restrictions, things like that. And as you can see right here, they explain that the JDEC standard for DDR5 is 4800. And that's why even when you purchase much faster memory, when you initially stick it in there, it typically defaults to DDR5 4800. You then have to put in either Intel's XMP or AMD's own RAM overclocking to get it to that rated number. The reason for this is really because of an integrated memory controller. You can see it explains it right here. The integrated memory controller has to run faster than it's designed to cope with, and there's quite a lot of variation in the quality of IMCs. And this is where this new Patriot memory comes in. As you can see down here, it says inner stage left Patriot and it's CKD DDR5 project. It says this work involves creating RAM sticks that will run at a speed of up to 6400 even if the IMC is unstable at that setting. It's not magic, it's just engineering or more specifically the use of something called Client Memory Clock Driver or CKD. They further explain down here, it says this is a chip that buffers the clock signals between the IMC and the DRAM module, easing the strain on the IMC. So this is a way to get around those clock limitations. Now, servers have been doing this for a little while now, and believe it or not, I think they actually, yeah, they say it right here, Team Group has also actually beaten Patriot to the line by adding their own DDR5 Elite memory with CKD. But the difference here is that while theirs only goes up to 6400, Patriot's new modules are looking to push things as high as 7200. So once again, even if your CPU currently doesn't support anywhere near 7200 or anything like that, it can still do it. But of course, like always, when it comes to getting something much faster, it seems almost too good to be true, there are some caveats. When it comes to the CKD, that caveat is unfortunately that you're getting much faster speeds, but you're gonna take a hit in your timings. And the reason for that is because when you add this, there has to be kind of an added check that has to happen in between talking to the IMC and the CKD. And that obviously takes time. But obviously applications that prefer higher clocks to worse timings are gonna get a really big benefit from this. Not only that, but while you have these kind of base frequencies rated much higher, this one obviously getting as high as 7200. Typically, that also means that you can overclock it even further as well. So we're talking some really fast clock speeds here. I mean, just imagine something like DDR5 9000. Just absolutely unbelievable clock speeds. We shall see. It should seriously add some performance in certain applications. But of course, time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that I showed this leak from well-known leaker Kepler, who confirmed that Granite Ridge is actually already in mass production. If you didn't see that video, to which, of course, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld so you can keep up to date on all the newest PC hardware news. Either way, Granite Ridge is the codename for AMD's next-gen Ryzen CPUs. Think either Ryzen 8000 or 9000. Now, personally, I believe they're likely going to skip Ryzen 8000 and go straight to 9000 just because of the fact that they've technically already released the 8000 series with their mobile chips and those obviously are based on zen 4. this on the other hand will be based on zen 5. so yeah we know granite ridge is already in mass production but believe it or not kepler actually said something slightly earlier that is even better news as you can see right here someone specifically said when is the 9000 series coming and according to kepler who once again has been a really good leaker in the past stated i've heard april from multiple people not sure if it's launch or just announcement. So yeah, we could seriously see AMD's Ryzen 9000 series come way sooner than we ever thought, likely to get something out because of Intel's new 14th gen CPUs. I mean, April, we're talking just a few months from now, 
pretty much right around the corner. And it actually gets even better because Red Gaming Tech also seem to confirm from their sources that they're hearing right around April as well. Not only that, but in this video right here, Red Gaming Tech also says this. So yeah, 2024 is shaping up to be a very interesting year for PC hardware. In terms of graphics cards, we've got AMD's own RDNA 4 GPUs, as well as Intel's Battle Mage, which are going to launch around the midpoint of this year. So yeah, Ryzen 9000 looks to be right around the corner, but so does the RX 8000 series, coming sometime right in the middle of the year, along with Battle Mage. Basically, 2024 is already gearing up to be a great year for PC hardware, but of course, my question is always, really is it going to boil? down to price. Fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, what are you most excited about? Ryzen 9000 or their RX 8000 GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, have a great day!